Michael Smith offers an appetizer from Kansas City. It's sautéed diver sea scallops served with diced celery, squash, parsnips, and black truffle garnish. Then Joachim Splichal presents the main course from Los Angeles. It's layers of seared ahi tuna separated with avocado, red onion compote, and oven-dried tomatoes. Finally, dessert is prepared in New York City. Deborah Snyder does a multi-dimensional dish, chocolate pistachio tart, a pistachio flan, candied pistachios, and a muscat wine sauce. In 1994, Michael Smith and wife Debbie Gold became executive chefs at the American restaurant in Kansas City. He began his culinary training in Denver, then traveled and worked in France. After returning to the States, he worked in Chicago at, among others, Charlie Trotter's. His appetizer is Diva Scallops. Uh, what we're going to do here today is a uh, sautéed sea scallop with some uh, mirepoix vegetable, uh, black truffles, and truffle juice. Diced parsnip. A lot of times when you're cutting into a small dice, you just want to get a nice straight slice. Scrap all the rest. You don't need it. You can always make soup out of that stuff. Turn these around. Made nice long batonets. Some of them are not so straight, so we'll straighten those out. And then we'll make our cubes. We also introduce celery into the dish. And if you're going to dice celery and use it in savory cooking, you need to peel it. Because there's lots of uh, chewy little strands that need to go away. There we go. That'll be enough. We'll cut these ends off here. Once again, we'll make long, nice strips of equal sizes. You want them always to be the same size as the other vegetables you just cut. Slices of squash are diced. There we go. We'll do a couple more. That'll give us an equal amount of each vegetable. There we go. Get rid of these guys. The vegetables help some season. The veggies are blanched in salted water. There we go. So we put those in there. Okay. Once the vegetables are poached nicely, blanched for maybe a minute, just a little bit al dente, we'll put them in some nice cold ice water to cool them down and to stop the cooking process. Don't leave them in the water too much tends to bleed out some of the flavor into the water. So now we've got a beautiful set of vegetables. And when mixed with some black truffle, some mashed potato, and the sea scallops, it'll be a wonderful dish. And before seasoning, before sauteing our uh, sea scallops, we'll season them on both sides. Salt and pepper. Simply, it's enough. Sear in olive oil. Then we'll slice some of our truffle. We'll save two of these for a garnish. And we'll dice the rest. There we go. Our sea scallops are just about ready to turn. And those take just a minute or two on each side. And then we'll go in the oven for another two or three minutes.
I'm going to go ahead and put these in the oven now. At about 375 degrees. We'll be in there for two or three minutes to finish cooking to the interior where it's nice and warm, yet sort of medium rare. Oh, come on. Oh, I have a small plate. Yeah, here we go. Set them right there. I want to utilize some of the juices in this pan. A lot of nice scallop juices in there. So we're going to put our, our vegetables, a little bit of chicken broth. Now that deglazing of the chicken stock let loose all of that scallop flavor. A little bit of truffle juice for some depth of flavor. And then our truffles. It's, it's truffle time, so we have to be generous with the truffles. A little bit of butter to smooth it out. Touch of olive oil for flavor. Salt and pepper. We have a potato puree. It's going to go right in the center of the plate, just to kind of hold the scallops together. You can use any favorite recipe that you have. Just like that. Chopped chervil. Just need the little fresh green to set it off. There we go. Now the broth has been kind of thickened with the butter. There we are. I got it on top there. Holy mackerel. That looks pretty good. Here we are. The owner chef of Patina in Los Angeles is Joachim Splichal. He was born in Germany, then at 18 traveled to Holland to work at a hotel. He ended up in the kitchen, and that, as they say, was that. He cooked in Switzerland and France before coming to the States. His entree is an ahi tuna towel. A piece of ahi tuna is seasoned. And the best way to has to be coarse salt, like kosher salt, or fleur de sel, and a lot of pepper. It's seared in olive oil. As you see, it goes very quickly. It's about 20 to 30 seconds on each side, and then you move the tuna around. At the same time, you peel the scallion. Just peel off the dirt. Cut it and add them to the tuna. And just roast them with the tuna. Again, you see it goes, it's like a filet of beef in a sense. You want to make absolutely sure that's really rare. A red onion filling is started. Add them in a pot. And just add a little bit of soya sauce. 
touch of vinegar, rice wine vinegar, and a touch of sesame seed oil. And let it boil for about two to three minutes. What do you want to achieve with the with the onions? You just want to make sure they they get the flavor of the soya sauce, the rice wine. Another layer of the tower will be oven dried tomatoes. Also, a layer of avocado. And you peel it. And you cut the avocado in slices. The last thing to do is prepare the soya, uh, the ponzo sauce, which you need shallots for it. You cut them very thin. Put them into a pan, a touch of salt, a little bit of pepper, rice wine vinegar, soya sauce, and a touch of olive oil. We're ready to assemble the dish. We take the tuna, which rested a little bit, and slice it lengthwise. And as you see, it's very rare. We need four slices for it. And we start placing one piece of tuna on the plate. Fanning out the avocado. And placing it on top of the tuna. We place a second layer of tuna top of the avocado. Add the, war the warm soya onions. Place another slice of tuna top of the onions and finish this one with the layer of the oven dried tomatoes. Layer of tuna is placed on the top. Sliced scallions will garnish and the roasted scallions are draped over the towel. The sauce, the ponza sauce. Over the tuna. just decorated with the sliced scallions. And you, as you see, it's perfectly decorated. Enjoy it.
Judson Grill is located in the heart of New York's Midtown. The pastry chef is Deborah Snyder. She began her career at Peter Crump's cooking school in the city, then went on to work at 11 Madison Park and the Union Square Cafe. Her dessert is a chocolate pistachio tart with pistachio flan. The tart filling is started with equal amounts of butter and bittersweet chocolate. They'll be melted over hot water. It will be combined with whole eggs, egg yolks, and sugar. I want to whisk them thoroughly together, but I'm not really looking to volumize them up at all, just to combine them. When, it, when they're well combined, I add them to my chocolate mixture. And I fold them together. Last, I want to add 20 grams of sifted flour on top of the chocolate. I've already sifted it, but you can sift it straight into the chocolate mixture. And then I fold the flour into the chocolate. As soon as your flour is incorporated, your mixture is finished. A mixture of pistachio paste, almond paste, sugar and butter will flavor the inside of the tart. When my mixture starts to lighten, and I don't see any sugar grains, you should stick your finger in to feel it. The sugar should be really evenly distributed so as not to feel it too much. Turn it back on, start adding your eggs. Try to let it beat through before you add the next one. When my eggs are incorporated and my mixture is smooth and homogenized, I turn the mixer down low and add just a little bit of sifted cake flour. Meanwhile, the flan is started with whole milk, a split vanilla bean, and lemon zest. And this is one and a quarter cups of chopped, roughly chopped, toasted pistachios. I just took these out of the oven. You want them to go into the milk hot. They'll impart more flavor that way. What I'm going to do is bring this mixture to a boil and then let it sit for at least an hour to infuse. I'm going to blend it with four egg yolks and three whole eggs. <clears throat> and five and a half, half ounces of sugar. I whisk these together very well. And I don't want to do this until I'm ready to add my milk because the yolks will actually start to burn your sugar and you'll get a grainy custard base. Hot milk is tempered into the eggs and sugar, then will be strained. The flan mixture goes into greased ramekins. It will be cooked in a water bath for 20 minutes at 300. Meanwhile, the pistachio almond mixture goes into pre-baked shells. And then I pour the warm chocolate mixture right over it. If you want to make the chocolate mixture up ahead of time, that's fine. Just microwave it gently to get it to an almost liquid stage when you spoon it into the tarts. Bake 8 to 10 minutes at 325. At the restaurant I serve the tart with a sauce made of reduced muscat wine, which I spoon onto the center of the plate. It's really thick and syrupy, so you don't need to use a lot. 
I warm the tart in the oven, and then I place it slightly offset. I have candied Sicilian pistachios, which I just candy with a little corn syrup and confectioner sugar to hold down the ice cream. And then I scatter a few around the plate. This is the baked off flan that's been chilled. I unmold it right here. An unusual muscat ice cream is served. Sugar spiral. 